in one fell swoop, the Chicago Bulls lost their heart, the game, and their winning streak in their loss last night against the Houston Rockets. We're going to talk about what went into that loss, what made it so bad, how the Chicago Bulls can grab the reins of this team possibly, and why efforts like last night highlight why a deal may be needed for this team. We'll get into all that and more on today's Chicago Bulls Central. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. All right, Bulls fans. So I don't I don't even know what to say. The Chicago Bulls lay a complete goose egg of a game against the Houston Rockets, and it started off terribly. And then the Bulls got us excited again with the way that the first half ended with that wild three from Zach Levine that put the Bulls up surprisingly. And then the Bulls start out with in the third quarter looking like a team that had woken up and was going to execute and go ahead and close out that game. And then the Houston Rock Rockets snatched that back and said, No, nah, we got this. And that is the biggest issue with the Chicago's Bulls team. And one of the things that I talked about even yesterday on the pre-recorded episode is just you cannot bet on any level of play yet from the Chicago Bulls. You just can't. They showed us three games of heart, desire, uh, a, a, a better effort defensively. And then at home, they come out and lay a huge goose egg of a game in which they have no defensive identity at all. And that played huge parts into the issues with the Chicago Bulls team. The offense. Wasn't the biggest issue last night. Let me be clear there. The Bulls did what about what you want them to do offensively, even when looking at, yeah, the big three all weren't as efficient as what we've seen in the, in the three games prior to last night, but the Bulls did enough, putting up 118 points on almost 50% shooting, on 48.9% shooting, and 37% from three-point range, and chipping in 27 assists on 45 made baskets. The turnovers, less than double-digit turnovers for the Chicago Bulls in one of the few times this season. That is what you typically want to see from the Chicago Bulls, but where do they get outworked at? The heart, the heart areas of the game. Getting outworked on second-chance points. Getting out-rebounded by double-digit points. And, and the Houston Rockets, yes, albeit they got extremely hot and they were hitting some shots that were extremely well, extremely well defended, but the Bulls did not have that defensive identity consistently at all and it played a part. Every single player but Kobe White had a negative plus minus in this game. Kobe White, the only pop player in the positive plus minus with a plus minus of plus 17. Kobe White was balling last night. And DeMar DeRozan, you guys know, I call him Emar Rosen. He chipped in 31 points. You can't knock him for anything that he did offensively and nine assists. But the defense as a whole, it wasn't just the DeMar DeRozan thing. The switching. Listen. Head coach Billy Donovan has to realize when things don't work, to, it's okay to move away from them. Why do you go to a, 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 a heavy switching defense when you're getting killed every single time you switch in this game? I understand in general, the Bulls are going to have some games where switching a lot on defense works into their favor. Last night was not one of those chances, and Billy Donovan repeatedly went back to the same goddamn thing. The lack of adjustments, one of the things on this winning streak I've said is that not only did the players step up their game, the coaching staff stepped up their game as well, but now we sit with the Chicago Bulls team that lost to the worst team in the NBA in the Houston Rockets, yet the worst shooting team in the NBA, worst defense in the NBA, one of the worst offenses in the NBA, and you wouldn't have known any of that looking at this game last night. They were out there playing like they were Steph Curry and Klay Thompson, and they were the young Golden State Warriors. That's how they were playing out there, and it was embarrassing that the Bulls continue to give up that type of play that like, again, like I said, some of those shots were, were, were really toughly defended shots that just went in and you're going to have that sometimes, but this was, this game just wasn't it for the Chicago Bulls in a time where the Chicago Bulls, I've said it before, and I'm going to say it here now as well by January 15th. That's it. That's it. The, the stretch that the team that the, that the Bulls have coming up against primarily all playoff teams in the next, this is where the Bulls can save their season. If they don't, it's over with. That's it. The Bulls are 14 and 19 on the season, five games below 500, and still only like three and a half games back from being the sixth seed. But all that does not matter if you can't string together wins. Now, realistically, this is one loss in the last four games in which they are technically three and one, if that's how you want to look at it. The Bulls very well with the way that they play can come out and look very good against Milwaukee in their next game and win that game. And then how does that change the tone around Bulls Nation? But the thing that, that is so 
concerning about this team is the playing down to level of con- of of competition. You even hear have Zach Levine saying that they overlook uh, the the Houston Rockets. They took them lightly. Why? You are a under five hundred team. You can't take anyone lightly. And the fact that this team doesn't understand that sense of urgency, that they don't understand that every single game, it don't matter if they were playing a high school team, is fighting for their lives right now for this season. They don't understand it. You don't have the respect of the fan base to not overlook an opponent on your home court. What is that? That is what that is some of the biggest issues with this team is they just they lack so much identity. They lack so much heart. And yeah, we were missing players like Javante Green, Alice Caruso, Derek Jones Jr. They very well could have changed the tide of this game with the way that they keep the intensity up defensively and just energy wise overall. But that doesn't matter. You knew they weren't walking through that door. Alice Caruso was in concussion protocol. He's probably not coming back anytime soon. And we've seen this Bulls team, albeit it did take some last minute magic in some of those games, in a lot of those games, to win the games. But we've seen this team ratchet up the defensive intensity even without those players. Shout out to to head coach Billy Donovan playing Daylon Terry, who got in there in the second quarter and got some minutes. And the Bulls went on. A little stretch in, in that time. Ayo DeSumo hitting two clutch threes in that time with, with Daylon Terry. I think Daylon Terry was on the court for both those threes. Shout out to them. Use Daylon Terry more. He's going to bring some of that energy that you want and need to see. Again, I said this before that if you rely on a rookie to save your season, it's already lost. So I'm not necessarily saying let's rely on Daylon Terry's energy to just save the Bulls' energy this season. But when you're lacking some of your energy players, go to the young rook that's ready, willing, and it and, and could bring some of the things that you need in playmaking and defense on this team. So he did play them, albeit only seven minutes. Um, but it's just, it's really concerning the level of play from the team, especially considering what's coming on the horizon. It's not getting any easier for the Bulls. Yeah, we were announced that we had the easiest strength the schedule going forward, but this next bit of stretch is probably our most difficult uh, uh, part of the season left for the Chicago Bulls before it gets pretty much easier after February for the Bulls. But Hey, listen, we, we may not even it may not even matter by then. This bull season could be so far gone by then in this next stretch that if they don't get it together now, it's gonna be tough. Looking at the next set of games for the Bulls, we got Milwaukee, then we got Detroit, Cleveland, Cleveland, Brooklyn, Philly, Utah, Boston, Washington, OKC, Golden State, Detroit, Atlanta. That takes us almost to the end of January right there. This Bulls team has to get their crap in gear and in order. And you know what? I'm, I'm done saying that, too. At the end of the day, it's this. We understand the urgency, but until the players understand the urgency, it, 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 it's all for naught. It does not matter. And contrary to what some fans or box score wa- watchers will have you have you uh, uh, think, this isn't just on one player. It isn't just Vooch. It isn't just DeMar's ball dominance. It isn't just uh, Zach Levine and his, him taking bad shot. It. it isn't just Billy Donovan and the head coach. It's so much going on with this team that this team and franchise may be temporarily broken. Now, one of the positives from this game is that I'm really starting to think that Kobe White does have a future in Chicago. And I know that may not be the common mindset, but Kobe had some of the most energy out there. He played probably the best defense out there tonight. Um, And just, you know, his offense came along in the second half when we needed it big time as well. Kobe has improved. Kobe would have his first full offseason this far in his into his NBA career, I'm starting to look at Kobe and saying, especially with some of the older veterans that you have on this team that may want to get paid more, Kobe may be the, the one of the options that you need to keep. And as the Bulls move forward and look at their younger players, listen, the Bulls, I've said this before, and I don't mean to shit on, on, on DeMar as a player, but if, you're, if DeMar is the future of your franchise, your future's ugly. Because you can't have a future of a franchise with a player that's over the hill as far as the NBA. Yes, he still plays and can still contribute greatly. But that's not something you bet your future on. And is Zach Levine that? There's some doubts around that now. So you don't want to necessarily give up these young 22, 23-year-old, 21-year-old pieces that still have so much room for development and growth that we have barely gotten a chance to untap it and unlock it. And when it comes to Kobe White, yes, he could be up in that trade value, and that could be a realistic outcome in this. But also, A.K. and Eversley may be looking at this and saying, hey, listen, Kobe is rounding out to a hell of a bench player. Is he the defensive player that Alice Caruso is? Hell no. Does he run the offense like a Goran Dragic? No, not yet. But he brings the offense, the playmaking. Like, Kobe's rounding out to a very nice player, and some may, we may need to, to consider keeping on to that. 
Also, Io DeSumo, Io DeSumo outside of a few games this season, right? And he's shown the flashes of the Nigerian nightmare that we saw last season, especially on the defensive end. But for the most part, he sucked. Like, let's just be clear here. Io DeSumo has not been good for the Chicago Bulls for a large part this season. The defense hasn't been as consistent as what it was last season. Um, It's still, like I said, we've seen flashes of that, but it hasn't been nearly as good and consistent as what it was last season. Patrick Williams showing some signs of life, showing some signs of aggression on the on the offensive end. But as I've said before, one of the biggest concerns there is you don't go to him often. He still gets no plays ran for him. And, it's, and you can tell that easily if you watch these games. And it makes you think like, okay, what, where would Patrick Williams actually be at right now if he got three, four, five plays ran for him every game at least on top of what he's doing now, taking the open shots a little bit more aggressively, still pass on some open shots in this game where if he would have just took the open shot confidently, probably would have been a bucket for him. But how do you expect that confidence to build if you're not playing into that? This Bulls team is all but broken. Can it still be fixed? Can it be mended this season? There's definitely a possibility for that. But the further we go on and we have losses like this, it, it, it's, it's not looking good, fam. It's just not looking good. And so, you know, we've had the conversation. We've talked about it. What AK and Eversley could look to do at the trade deadline, buyout deadline, all this. It really isn't going to matter. We can do all the speculative pieces that we want. I can do all the trade videos that you guys want if you want me to do trade idea videos. But it all does not matter until AK and Eversley pick a lane for this team. And I tell you what, I know there's going to be some co- Oh, rebuild, blow. Rebuild ain't coming. A full rebuild is not coming for this team. Firing Billy Donovan, you can give me all the scenarios in which the Bulls could possibly fire Billy Donovan. Know what franchise you're rooting for. Jarius Reinsdorf is not about to fire a coach with three or four years left on his deal and have to pay that and another head coach. That's the same uh, uh, Jerry Reinsdorf that wanted to keep Jim Boylan on, right? That told AK Neversley, I want you to leave, keep an open mind with Jim to keep Jim on. What? This team is in such a bad spot right now. The lackadaisical defense from them, taking anybody for granted when you're this far under 500, all that has to stop. DeMar DeRozan had this to say after the game. We let them get on the run, and a team like that, they don't know no better. Once they see a couple go in, they're going to shoot anything and think it's going in. That's what happened. We didn't give no resistance to make them second guess. All right, DeMar, but guess what? Your defense didn't do that either. The thing that I'm tired of with this team is Zach, DeMar, and freaking Billy Donovan saying all the right, those three specifically, saying all the right things and it not translating to what we see on the court at all. Vooch, to his credit, I know Vooch didn't have the greatest statistical output, but they rarely went to him in the game, right? Vooch, when you go to him, is pretty damn consistent. I would say this, Vooch has probably been the most consistent bull of the season. Now, he was 4-13 and on the game, which isn't good at all. He's going to have his down games, but Vooch, I, I, I believe more when Vooch says things. I believe things more when Goran Dragic says things. The two players that are supposed to be your one in your one in one A or one in two, wherever you want to look at it, they talk a lot, and I don't believe a goddamn thing they say. And that's a problem. And there are a lot of Bulls fans feeling the same way. This team is broken. This team is disgusting. This team lacks effort. This team lacks heart. This team lacks so much that are just basic bare bones of what we deserve as Bulls fans. It's utterly ridiculous. Getting out to a 23 and 5 start to the Houston Rockets. That against a team that came into this game 9 and 23. You that's not going to cut it at the NBA level. And so as this continues to go forward, listen, people ask, do the Bulls deserve any All-Stars? Hell no. No. You don't, we don't deserve not one player on this team to be an all-star. I hope we get shut out, and I hope it's a wake-up call for everyone. From the coaching staff to the players to the front office, everybody needs to wake up. This roster ain't going to get it done. They, this, by, by, by nothing but sheer will, they could definitely get into the playoffs. But if we're talking about this team getting to a true next level of being that team that's looked at as one of the more dangerous teams in the conference and in the league, you got to make some improvements. And, and I know that he is a Chicago-style player, but Javante Green and Alex Caruso may be your best trade pieces unless you want to go into the big three. And the reason why I say that is this. Javante, 29 years old, going to unrestricted free agency for the first time in his career. 
He's shown to be an energy guy, defensive guy, and who can push the, the pace off the, off the break, off the bench, I should say, for almost any team. There's going to be a championship level team that offers Javante Green their full level mid level their full mid level exception next offseason, and I guarantee you the Bulls aren't going to match that. The Bulls may look to pair Javante. With, and don't get me wrong, I do not want to. This is me strictly from nothing but a business mindset. I do not want to see Javante Green go from the Chicago Bulls. But when you look at it, it's, it's this: Javante Green is a is a player that you still are forced to playing out of position, playing him at the four. Javante would be a beast at the two slash three if he was able to play that primarily and guard those players. But with the makeup of your current roster, it's probably not going to happen. Now, the Bulls could absolutely do some things to the roster to make that make more sense. But you can't tell me a team like the Golden State Warriors. You can't tell me a team like maybe even the Dallas Mavericks who may be looking for an energy guy to play with and doesn't necessarily need and request a lot of shots. They may offer Javante Green a full mid-level exception. And the Chicago Bulls, just aren't going to match that when you look at what they need on the team, shooting and size. And when you talk about taking away mid-level type money for the Bulls that may only have the mid-level exception, depending on what they do with other contracts, it's just the reality of it is it's probably just the Bulls probably aren't going to do it. So you may look to move a Javante and take advantage of a team that maybe is, is has a younger player or maybe a lower first round pick to get yourself even more bites at the apple. I don't know. But Javante may be a big trade piece for the Chicago Bulls. I do not want to see him go. Alice Caruso could be there as well. Championship teams will come calling for Alice Caruso. If this Bulls team by mid-January does not seem like they've turned the corner to be able to be a playoff team, we could start seeing heads roll. And I tell you what, Bulls fans, it's probably not going to be the heads that you guys desire. It's probably not. Could be Vooch. I'm not saying I'm not ruling it out. The ones that want to see DeMar gone, it's probably not going to be DeMar. The ones that want to see Zach gone, it's probably not going to be Zach. So when we're talking about these trades and these moves that the Chicago Bulls could possibly make, I need you guys to keep an open mind and realize there's more likely a chance that it's not going to be the players that you want, the players that you just look at and Bulls fan, at Bulls fans as a whole look at and be like, oh, he's not playing well. Let's trade him away and get something be, uh, big back. It may not go the way that you guys think and you hope for, but it could as well, right? I'm not saying that it's not going to, but this team has to figure some stuff out. Billy Donovan has to. You're the coach. Billy Donovan. Hate it, I love it, is our coach for the foreseeable future. I would say this, that extension from Billy Donovan, it at least guaranteed him two more years. I can see the Bulls maybe with a year left moving on from Billy Donovan if it comes to that. But he's going to be this coach at least two more and probably more seasons after this season. I get it. A lot of Bulls fans are, aren't happy with that. They aren't happy with the secret extension. But the reality of it is, is that's more than likely the outcome for this. The Bulls are broken. And can they fix it? That remains to be seen as we go along the season. But let me know what you guys think, how you feel about this team, what's your current mindset with this team. I know it's been one loss, and that, that says a lot as well, right, is the fact that we aren't as – this team won three games in a row, and one loss has completely turned almost everybody's mindset on it because we believe in the losses more than we believe in the wins right now. And this Bulls team did that to us. So it's going to be interesting to see how the season continues for the Bulls, but you can be tuned in right here at Chicago Bulls Central because we're going to cover it all. Make sure you're following us at Bulls Central Pod. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, bullscentralpod at gmail.com. Lastly, if you want to leave a text and our voicemail, the number to do so, 773-270-2799. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related because of you guys. And like I liked in everything on, go Bulls. Love you guys. See red as much as you can. And peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of The Breaks, Breaks Media. Media. Media.